have a couple of visitors, welcome them. Um, also the ones that are listening online, uh, welcome you as well. Thank you, Brian, for those songs. Um, just sounded wonderful. I wish you would have just kept going. Um, also, thank you guys for your testimonies. That was great. Um, for a message this morning, um, I knew this day was coming up for a couple weeks, so I prayed to God to uh, um, lay a message on my heart, and he did. And, you know, as it usually goes, uh, Satan tries to discourage you, and, and um, so I couldn't kind of get away from this message. And, and one day out of the blue, I asked my wife, um, what do you want me to preach the next, what would you preach the next time it was you? And immediately she said, exactly this. And I was like, all right, there's my answer. So just a little plug in, if you ever um, need a little bit of advice, just ask your wife. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, for a message today, um, uh, the title of the message is uh, Forgiveness. Um, I have a question for each one of you um, this morning uh, before we start. Um, if God would ask you why he should let you into heaven, what would you say? What would your answer be? Would your answer be, um, I go to church every Sunday? Or um, maybe your answer would be, well, I was baptized. Um, I heard a um, guy talk the other day about, um, he said, you, you could be baptized enough times that the fish in the water would know your name, and it wouldn't get you into heaven. Um, so what, what would your answer be? Um, we need to be forgiven from our sins to enter into the, the kingdom of God. And each of, us, each of us is a sinner in need of a Savior that forgives our sins. And uh, each of us sins on a daily basis. I know I do. And we each, each day we need to be forgiven of our sins. So what is true forgiveness? Um, how, do we, how do we extend forgiveness to other people? Um, how do we, re we receive forgiveness if someone forgives us? And how do we forgive ourselves? There's uh, numerous uh, examples in the Bible that we could talk about uh, forgiveness, but uh, there's one that I chose um, to talk about this morning. Um, that's in Luke 15. Um, very familiar story, a uh, parable that Jesus taught about the prodigal son. And uh, I love that story of how um, the father gave grace to the son. And uh, I guess probably the reason I, and I love that story so much is... Uh, I experienced that from my parents. Um, I remember um, going to them after um, I received Christ in my heart, and I remember it was the week before I got married, I remember going to them and, and just ask, <clears throat> excuse me, asking for forgiveness of all the, the heartaches I gave him, and, and um, it's, it's, it's beyond words. The, the, uh, if, if, if your parents accept you as you are, and, and I remember them telling me they've forgiven me a long time ago, and that's probably why I, I, I appreciate this story so much. So, uh, if you turn your Bibles to Luke 15, um, start reading in verse 11. Um, and he said, a certain man had two sons, 
And the younger of them said to his father, Forgive me the, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with righteous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a famine, mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And he sent him into his fields to feed swine, and he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father, and when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe, and put, on it, put it on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat, and be merry. For this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. They, and they began to be merry. Now his elder brother was in the field, and as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry, and would not go in. Therefore came his father out, and entreated him. And, answered, and he answering said to, the, to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, neither trans." Grasped I at any time thy commandment, commandment, and yet thou never gavest me a kid, that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which thou hast devoured, hast, which hast devoured thy living with harlots, and that now thou hast killed him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art, art ever with me, and all I have is thine. It would meet that we should make merry and be glad, for this thy brother is de- was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we just bow before you this morning. We thank you and we praise you for this part of scripture. We thank you for the beautiful day and we thank you for our church today. I just ask that you just continue to be in our midst. And um, Lord, we just ask that you just open... Open the word to us today and, and whatever you have for us, Lord, and we ask that you prepare the hearts, including my own, um, what you have for us and that we can apply it to our lives, that we can walk closer to you, God. We pray this in your name. Amen. <clears throat> so, uh, this is a, um, quite an interesting story of uh, this young lad that decided to go out on his own and turn his back to God and his family. So um, you as fathers and, and young men, if you can picture yourself in this, in this story, here this man had two, two boys. And um, just in my own words, one day he, the, the youngest, come to his dad and said, Dad, um, I know you're still alive, but I'd like my inheritance. I'd like to have my share if, if you would pass. Whatever's mine, I'd like to have. And uh, so his father honored his request. Um, it was quite, quite disrespectful to the young man. Um, the Bible says, not many days after, the young man packed his bags and left. 
took all he, had, all he had and left home. It says he went to a far country, and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And as the young, young boy got to his destination, he started uh, living according to his own flesh. And there was, no more, there was no more dad there to give him orders each day. There was no more chores to do, um, no more rules to abide, and no, no curfew to meet. He was on his own. Life seemed good. And I'm not sure how long he was gone. Some scholars say he was gone for 30 years. I don't know. I haven't read it anywhere. But um, however, um, I had to think that dad, um, his dad probably prayed for that son every day um, as he seen him go out the driveway. Um, I'm guessing he prayed for him on a daily basis that he would return. And... This guy, this young lad, lad was living, thought he was living life. And like it, well, like it normally happens when the outlet, when there's an outlet and no intake on finance, the things come to a halt. And this is what happened. Um, his finances, um, he lost all those, he spent all those. And in the meantime, um, there arose a severe famine in that country. And, got, and things, things started getting tough. Um, he had no money, obviously no job. His friends left him. Um, probably didn't have any friends, probably had buddies at that time. Because um, I think friends would stick with you, or buddies, buddies would only be there when the times are good. Um, this young lad became in need, and as we know the story, he, he didn't have anything to eat. And one day he came to his senses that he thought of his dad at home. And he thought of the, of the, the hired workers he had, his dad had at home, had plenty to eat, um, had, a, had a father or had an employer that cared about him. And he uh, decided, uh, yeah, he, first of all, he, he actually, he was, he was hungry enough to where he found a farmer, a pig farmer, and uh, he asked for a job, and the pig farmer told him he could, he could feed his swine, and which was very unusual for a Jew, as, as pigs were considered unclean, and, uh, but he was... He was in dire straits, and he, he was hungry enough to where he even asked for the, for the pig food. And how many of us have been hungry enough to, to eat slop that we would have gave the pigs? Probably not. But he was in, he was in dire straits. <laughs> but no one gave him the, even gave him the pig food to eat. So one day he hit rock bottom. And he realized that he was in need and he couldn't help himself anymore. So he thought of his family at home. And in this story, I always wonder where his mom was. He never mentioned, it never mentions his mom, but um, anyhow, he thought of his dad at home and, and he decided to head home. And I always wondered what went through this young lad's mind and he might, might not have been young anymore at that time, I don't know, but as he, as he was heading home, um, I wonder what th went through his mind. Is, is his dad, is his dad going to accept him? Does he even know me? Uh, maybe my dad's not even alive anymore. Uh, but I think us as individuals have to come to that place in life to where we, we need to, when we stray away, we need to come back to the Father. And we know uh, we have a Heavenly Father that, that cares about us, that is always open and ready to receive us back in. So he heads home, and 
I picture Dad out in the field one day, maybe hoeing, hoeing his potatoes or whatever he was doing, and he was looking down. He looked down the road and he seen a, he seen someone walking towards him. And there was something familiar about that person, and the closer he got. That, that walks like my son. He looks familiar. And the closer he got, it is his son. And this father took off running. And that was unusual for men in that culture to run, which I'm not quite sure. Maybe someone has that answer, but I don't, I'm not sure why. But men didn't run. But this father did. He didn't care what people thought. And this father, he ran into the arms of his son and hugged him and kissed him. And he didn't, he didn't care how he smelled. He didn't care if he smelled like hogs. Um, he didn't care what he looked like. He was just excited to see his son again. And he didn't make him promise to never do this again. He didn't ask how much money he had left over, or if he had any left over, or even if he still loved him. He just took him just as he is, because he was his son. And that's, that's the Heavenly Father we have. I love that song, Brian, Just As I Am. Well, very fitting, um, that's exactly how our Heavenly Father is. If we ask Him, if we repent and ask for forgiveness, He will grant us that. <clears throat> so the, the young lad said, Dad, I have sinned against both heaven and against you. I am not worthy to be called one of your sons. I'm okay to be one of your hired servants. But instead, the father told the hired hands to get the finest robe and put it on his son. He didn't, he, didn't go to, he didn't go to the closet and just picked out any robe. He gave him the finest of what he had and put it on his son. He got a ring and put it on his finger. And then he killed the fatted calf and made a feast because he said, My son was dead and is returned and was lost and is found. What an example of, of true forgiveness. So I had to ask myself if, if, uh, if someone uh, comes to me and asks for forgiveness, am I willing, am I that willing to give my all back to him or whoever it is? Our Heavenly Father will forgive us to that extent if we only repent. He doesn't care what culture we come from or who we are. He doesn't care what color of skin we have. All he cares is because he loves us enough to take the Vegas back in. So how do we, how do we extend forgiveness to, to other people if someone asks us? Um, I had to think of the words in, in the Lord's Prayer. It says, forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. And in order to be forgiven... We need, to be, we need to forgive other people as well if they ask. And sometimes that's not the easiest thing to do. But it, it, sometimes it's a daily thing. In Matthew 18, Jesus talks about the unforgiving debtor. And then Peter asks him, um, How often shall my brother sin against me and I, and I forgive him? Is seven times enough? I love what Jesus answered him. He said, not seven times, but 70 times seven. In other words, just don't quit forgiving him if he, if he comes back and asks for forgiveness. It's a challenge for myself. How do we, um, how do we forgive people uh, that hurt us causes pain, and don't ask for forgiveness. Um, 
Maybe that someone doesn't have the chance to ask you for forgiveness. Um, some people do have the chance and don't take that opportunity. And um, thank you, Marvin, for your devotions this morning. Um, um, that's so true. If we, if we need to uh, forgive someone or have, have restitution to make, today's the day. Uh, there are so many young people, um, like you said, lately that passed in the blink of an eye or never woke up in the morning. Um, uh, it's, it was pretty challenging for myself. And, um, I had a, found a story, i um, not even sure where I got it from, but I, I finally found the, the YouTube video. Uh, how many of you know who Monty Williams is? Anybody in sports? Basketball? Any, nobody knows him? He's a, he's a coach um, for the Phoenix Suns. And Monty Williams is, I believe he coaches the Suns. Uh, back in February of 2016, uh, he lost his wife in a tragic accident, car crash. Um, another car, uh, the driver was on drugs and had a head-on crash and killed his wife. And this man never had the opportunity to, um, to ask for forgiveness because he was killed himself. So um, I have a little video clip I'd like to, to show you. Um, listen, to, listen to what Mondi says. He, he, um, he was talking at his, at his wife's memorial service. And I'd like for you guys to just listen to that pretty touching um, of, of the situation he was in to where he, he lost a loved one and the other party never had an opportunity to ask for forgiveness. But, if, Jerry, if you want to put that on the screen... Especially me. The Bible says in Psalms uh, 1331, Behold how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. And I think that's what we've done. Uh, and that's what Ingrid would have wanted. Psalm 731 says God is good. And 1 John 416 says God is love. During times like this, it's easy to forget that. Because what because we've what gone, we've gone through, through is pretty tough, tough and it's hard, hard, and we and want we an want answer. An answer. And, and, and we don't, we always, don't always get that, get that answer, answer when we want it. But, but we can't, can't lose sight of the fact, fact that, God that God loves us. us. And, that's and that's what my what wife, 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 and that's what I try to, however badly, exhibit on a daily basis. But God does love us. He loved me so much that he sent his son to die for my son. And I, for and I, one, for know one that I'm, I'm not, not the man, man that you guys see guys every see day. day. And only and God only could God cover God. that. He loved, he loved me so much, so much that he gave me a wife, wife that loved every part of me. And, and she, fit she fit me perfectly. Perfect. And I know, I know different, different players, players that I've had over the years probably got tired of me talking about my wife. But I used to always think to myself, like, who else was I going to talk about? So... That never that bothered me. Bother. Romans 8, 28 says, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. All of this will work out. As hard as this is for me and my family and for you, this will work out.
I know this because I've seen this in my life. See, back in 1990, at the University of Notre Dame, I had a doctor look me in the face and say, you're going to die if you keep playing basketball. And I had testing done, test after test, shipping me all over the place to try to figure out a way for me to play. And it didn't work out. And I kept that from Ingrid. She knew I was having some tests done, but she didn't know the severity of the situation. So my career was over at the age of 18. And we had a press conference, and I left the press conference um, by myself, and I went to her dorm room, and I told her what happened. And the very next word out of her mouth, words out of her mouth after we um, probably cried a little bit, she says, honey, Jesus can heal your heart. And I'm evidence that God can work it out. I don't care what you're going through. This is, this is hard, hard for, my for my family, family. but this but will this work, work out. out. And, my and my wife would wife punch would me punch if I were, I were to sit up here and whine about, about what's, going what's going on. on. That, doesn't that doesn't take away take the pain. pain. But, it but it will work, work out, out. Because, because God, God causes, causes all things, things to work out. out. You, just you just can't quit. You can't give in. See, the Bible says Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And America, and America teaches, teaches us, us to just, to just numb, that, numb that, and it's not and true, it's not but true. it is true. true. All you got to do, do is look around. Get outside, get outside of these walls, walls and you know, and it's, you true. know it's true. true. This will, this work, will out. work out. Doesn't mean, Doesn't it's, mean, not it's, not mean it's not hard. Doesn't mean it's not painful. Pain. 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 Doesn't mean we don't have tough times, and we're going to have tough times. What we need is the Lord. And that's what my wife tried to exhibit every single day. Now. I'm going to close, gonna close with, this, with this, and I think and it's I think the, most the most important thing that we need to understand. To understand. Everybody's, Everybody's praying, praying for me and my, me family, and my family, 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 which is right. Which is right, right, right. But let us but not let forget us that us there were that two, people two people in this situation. In this situation. And, that and that family needs prayer, prayer as well. well. And we have no ill will towards that family. In my house, we have a sign that says, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We cannot, we cannot serve, serve the Lord if we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't have, a heart, have a heart of forgiveness. That family, that family didn't, didn't wake up wake wanting up to hurt my wife. My wife. Life, is, Life hard. is hard. It is very it is hard. hard. And that was, and that was tough. tough. But we hold, but we no, hold no ill will, will towards, towards the Donaldson, Donaldson family. family. And we, we as, a group, as a group, brothers, brothers united, united in unity, 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 should be praying for that family because they grieve as well. So let's not lose sight of what's important. God will God work, this, work out. this out. My wife, My is, wife in is in heaven. heaven. God, God loves us. us. God, God is, love. is love. And when we walk, we walk away, away from, from this place, place today, let's celebrate. celebrate. Because, because my, my wife, wife is where we all, we all need, to need to be. be. And I'm envious, I'm envious of that. Of that. But, I but I got five crumb snatchers, snatchers I got to deal with. I love you guys for taking time out of your day to celebrate my wife. We didn't lose her. When you lose something, you can't find it. I know exactly, exactly where my wife, my wife is. is. I'll, miss I'll miss holding her hand. Her hand. I'll, miss I'll miss talking with my wife. With my wife. Um, um, Sam, Sam and, and Coach, Coach Donovan, Donovan probably, probably couldn't figure out why I always, always wanted to get out of the office. office. Uh, me uh, and me Mo and Cheeks. Cheeks. Um, um, Mo probably, probably wanted to go do something, something else. But, but we always wanted to get out of the office. I just enjoy being with my wife. I enjoy being with my family. And most and of the most times, of the times we, didn't we didn't do anything. anything. We just, just be at the house sitting around, sitting around um, 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 doing nothing. Doing nothing. I'm, gonna I'm gonna miss that. Miss that. Let's, not Let's not lose sight of what's important. important. God, is, God important. is important. What Christ, important. Christ, Christ, did, Christ did on the cross is important. Is important. Let's, Let's not, not lose sight, sight of that family, 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 family that also, also lost someone that they love. I love you guys. I hope I get a chance to hug and shake a hand and give a kiss on the cheek. But let's keep what's important at the forefront. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for that. Uh, what a testimony. Um, guy just lost his wife in a tragic accident, and 
and just simply Joseph forgave the, the other party. Um, and that's, that's our calling in life. If someone hurts us or um, even as much as takes a loved one, we need to forgive. Um, if, we, if we choose to not forgive someone, all we're doing is, is basically all we're doing is poisoning our own food at the smorgasbord of life. Um, I don't know if you get that or not, I'm going to say it again. If we choose to not forgive someone, all we're doing is poisoning our own food at the smorgasbord of life. True forgiveness releases us from prison. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. And if we have uh, ill will towards someone uh, and we do not choose to forgive, we are most miserable. And, and so often I've been guilty uh, of this. If, if, if you chose to not forgive someone and that person's name comes up in a conversation, oftentimes um, you don't have a lot of good to say about that person. Um, we don't forgive people because they deserve it. We forgive people because of how much we have been forgiven. And if we haven't been forgiven, we cannot forgive. We cannot give what we don't have. Forgiveness is not an option if we are sold out for Christ. It is something that's required of us if we expect to live with Christ in heaven someday. Uh, one more short story, a uh, true story. Don't know who this girl was, but I've heard it numerous times of a young girl um, that grew up in a Christian home and had God-fearing parents, loving parents, and one day she decided to just turn her back on God and leave her family and run away. The mom and dad had no idea uh, where she, what got what become of her, she left. And after 30 years, after three failed marriages and four children from different men in and out of abusive relationships, she decides one day to call her family. And her father answers the phone. And as soon as he hears uh, who this was, he asks two things. Where are you and how can I help you? Um, that is another example of true forgiveness. Um, in closing, um, how do we forgive ourselves? If we sin against God or against someone else, um, maybe we ask for forgiveness, but we struggle to forgive ourselves. That's very important as well probably as important as it is to, to ask for forgiveness because that's just another stronghold that Satan loves to, to use if you don't forgive yourself. You can forgive everybody else but, your, but yourself. You are also a person. You are someone that God loves and um, we need to do that. First John uh, 1 John 1.9 says, if we confess ourselves, he, meaning God, is faithful and just to forgive our sins and he even does more than that. It says he will cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. What a blessing. Let's bar our heads for prayer. Father in heaven, we um, again just bow in your presence and we thank you and we praise you for who you are and that you are a God of forgiveness. Lord, you know each one of our hearts and um, Lord, if, if there's, uh, we have ill will towards someone or uh, just struggle to forgive someone in our life that hurt us, Lord, just help us to um, correct that before it's too late, that uh, we don't die that way. And Lord, Lord, we most of all, we thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for each one of our sins. That he, as he hung on the cross, he said, forgive them, for they don't know what they do. 
That's true forgiveness, God. Just thank you again for meeting us here today and just uh, continue to bless our time together as we fellowship after church. We pray this in your name. Amen. I'll briefly open.